Okay. Uh, let's continue. Uh, last time I was talking about uh, lambdas and method references, and I talked about a bit about functional programming. I hope you remember this. And uh, I told you that uh, when you're doing functional programming, uh, rather than writing what to do, you write the code uh, that declares the things that you need to get in the end. So it's uh, like declarative programming, uh, unlike uh, imperative programming that you knew so far. And now I'm going to talk about declar uh, declarative programming library in Java, very important one. This library is called Streams API, and uh, we know we know everything about uh, Java syntax to just to, to use this. So uh, this uh, library appeared in Java 8, and uh, yes, it uh, heavily relies on lambdas and method references, and uh, it's. Uh, uh, it uses declarative approach and among other things it provides a transparent, pa a transparent parallelism so in some cases in some scenarios you can just uh, say to Java Streams API please uh, do this task in parallel please utilize as much uh, uh, CPU cores as you uh, as you have as you can and do this faster. So this is also made for transparent parallelism. We will talk about parallelism and uh, concurrency later, uh, but now you should understand that it's just pre sort of preparing this stuff. Okay, uh, so uh, in a nutshell, what's it about? Say we have list of block. Uh, block is just your class, so it's just a collection of blocks. And uh, we can convert a list of block into stream of block. So, sort of uh, like uh, we have actual collection of blocks and let's collect them to flying blocks using this blocks.stream. Each collection in Java API, each uh, uh, subclass of collection has this stream method. And we can provide uh, some method reference or lambda here, some functional interface uh, that transform uh, our blocks in a way so that uh, when we just call block stream dot map block squash it works uh, as following so we have blocks and then we have this squash method that transform block into a squashed block here so uh, why does it called map because it actually maps input to output this is why it called map this uh, uh, so not to be confused with hash map or tree map before, but uh, hash map and tree map they also mapping something to something in a static way. Like we have key and we have value. That's about map interface in Java. When we are talking about map method in Java Streams API, it's also mapping but in dynamic way. So we have uh, some sort of input. We have mapping function. So block. Uh, double colon squash is mapping function here and we have output and uh, you will also uh, encounter this map method in many many other languages you will encounter map in uh, JavaScript in TypeScript in Python in uh, Kotlin of course there are lots of uh, languages which with the map method that works like this okay uh, we transform this uh, what else can we do? We can filter, by the way, uh, if we provide a predicate, you also know what predicate is, right? Predicate is a function from object to boolean. So, uh, if we want to, uh, to swallow all the yellow blocks and uh, pass uh, through all the blocks that are not yellow. So, we can write the code like this, fill dot filter, squashed stream here, dot filter and here we have this lambda block to block get color is not yellow and uh, finally uh, we might want to do something with each element of this stream like uh, displaying it in console so we can uh, we have this filtered stream here so we're uh, calling for each method and uh, calling method reference here so system out dot print so please print 
uh, each squashed non-yellow block on screen on stream on on screen and all together we can put all together in one line actually all this stuff can be expressed in one line of uh, java code like blocks dot stream now we are doing mapping now we are doing filtering and now we are doing something uh, for each uh, element of the stream so this uh, uh, this uh, works like this and uh, I know I know that uh, many of you are using Linux, right? Uh, I think at least someone uh, utilizes Linux. Uh, did you? At least we had. <laughs> at least okay, okay, okay. Uh, do you know how this pipe uh, pipe symbol works in Linux? Mark? Yeah, you already know. Uh, maybe someone. If if not, so please make yourself familiar be with this because this is just the basic stuff that each. IT person should know about uh, pipes in Linux. Uh, so it works uh, in the same way. Uh, it uh, takes output from one process and uses this output as an input to another process. And we can, uh, using this vertical pipe, construct a chain, a pipeline, what's called pipeline, uh, for uh, uh, data processing. So here, uh, using standard Linux uh, commands, we're just doing the following merge two files, convert lines to lowercase, sort, display the last three lines in alphabetical order. So uh, this is done using connection of pipe segments into one data processing pipeline in Linux. So this is generally the same idea. We're using in uh, output from the previous step and using it, it as a input on the next step. And uh, what's good about it is that it works like a pipeline, it's like a conveyor simultaneously, and it uh, mm, uh, so uh, if, for example, we uh, want only three uh, elements on the output, we can stop this pipeline as soon as we reach these three elements. Unlike uh, in uh, uh, imperative style programming, you're usually doing what? You have this list, you transform it to another whole list, then you transform to another whole list, then you get these three elements, right? Here, it's all done in one pass simultaneously, and as soon as the answer is here, we can stop the full processing. So this is more effective way to do stuff. Uh, not only this, it's uh, way more concise. Please look on the left and look on the right. This is the code that makes the same thing. This, this code does the same thing. Like what? Uh, we uh, want to, we have uh, a list of transactions uh, of different currency and we want to get it collected into a map so that keys are currency and uh, values are lists of transactions with this currency. So we want to group elements by currency. And this is how we can do this before invention of Java Streams API in Java version 7. And still, there, there is lots of code like this in legacy Java projects. Lots of stuff like this. See how, how many code, <laughs> how many words we have, long uh, uh, variable names. And uh, see how many things we must uh, just take into account. Uh, we need to create this hash map, new hash map that's going to collect this. We need to understand that if for given currency, for the given currency, there is no entry in this hash map if uh, transactions for currency is null, when, then we have to create this new array list for, for these transactions. Then we have to put it. So lots of code, uh, lots of aspects that we must keep in mind, and of course lots of opportunities to make mistakes, to make bugs. And here, what do we have here? Just a short one-liner. Technically, it's just a single line of code that says, oh, we have a list of transactions. Okay, convert it to stream, and then collect uh, using grouping collector. I will explain you everything about grouping collector collectors just now. Uh, using uh, extracting currency as a key for uh, grouping. So we have transaction, get currency is just... Uh, 
uh, getter for currency so we we just uh, this one is just uh, extracts the aspect that we are going to use for grouping and we'll get the same result so more concise code uh, it uh, will <coughs> be more performant and uh, easy to read and less uh, opportunities to make mistakes so this is why we should use uh, Java Streams API. This is why Java Streams API is such a powerful tool uh, for you. Okay, so now that we have a vague idea of what Streams API is, uh, let's drill down. Uh, so there are three, as you might understand, there are three categories of Stream API methods. Something that create a stream, then something that uh, convert one stream to another stream and you already know about map and filter and we'll look for more and uh, there is of course terminal operation because we don't usually need a stream but we need a list or we need some something materialized right like stream is not not materialized stream is a stream but uh, we need something materialized so to materialize the result of st streaming processing we need terminal operations so Let's walk through all three kinds of these operations. So how do you create a stream? First of all, sometimes you need an empty stream in some circumstances. And uh, this is easy to, to make, just stream.empty will create an empty stream for you. If, uh, for, for example, your API requires some stream as an input and you just have nothing, you just can pass an empty stream. It's absolutely okay. Do, no need to create an empty array list and then convert it to stream. Please don't do this. We have a special factory method for, for, for this. We can just in, in enumerate elements. Just like uh, in list.off, I shown you earlier, you can use list.off to create a mutable list. But even before, before that, you can create stream.off uh, for creating uh, a stream of en enumerated elements. If you know in advance uh, what elements do, do you have. You can create stream from array and uh, from a collection. In practice, this is the most frequently used method to create a stream. You usually have a collection like array list or array deck or <laughs> linked list and you just uh, using dot stream to create stream of its elements or set <coughs> everything in java can be collected into stream converted to stream and uh, also there are modern apis some modern apis that return uh, ready-made streams like uh, uh, for example you have uh, path and if you uh, need to get list of files sometimes you need a list of files like materialized list but sometimes you need just stream of uh, files so that you, uh, for example, can search and then you can break the search and you can exit the search as soon as you found the needed file. So for this, uh, for this scenario, it's better to use files.list that will not return list, but it will return a stream of path here. Uh, you also can concatenate streams. If you have one stream and another stream, you can use stream.concat. Uh, to concatenate two streams, but there is a tricky thing that you must take into account. If this one is infinite stream, you will never get to elements of this stream because uh, streams can possibly be infinite in Java, by the way. If collections are always finite because uh, collections are stored in memory, list is stored in memory as an array, actually, you have array of one million elements and one million elements are there in memory. Uh, if we are talking about streams, streams can be potentially infinite. You can talk about stream of, I don't know, events that you are consuming from some messaging system and you can, uh, you can process the stream of events and it is potentially infinite because you never store them all in, at once in memory. So you can concatenate streams, but this, uh, of course, this works only for finite streams. And then you can generate streams. Uh, for example, uh, if you want a stream of random doubles, you can use stream.generate because generate 
uh, accepts producer functional interface as its argument. Uh, so uh, math double colon random is a method reference that uh, can be can be converted, can be cast to producer interface, functional interface. So, uh, for example, if you have a method that can just produce and more and more values, then you can convert this method to stream using using this. But uh, if you really need a stream of doubles, of random doubles, please don't use this method. Use a special method like this, thread local random current doubles. This will return you double stream. What does this mean, double stream? See, stream of double and double stream. Why do we need this? Why do we need this special case here? You should know already from what I told you about uh, generics and primitives. Well, I think I must reiterate it once again for you to understand. Uh, okay, uh, stream of double. All, uh, uh, I, uh, I think everyone understands that we cannot put stream double with lower case D here. Like stream of double with lower case D is unacceptable in Java. I hope you, you already know this. Yes, please make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. This is unacceptable. This is a ray of print, uh, this is a uh, generic, generic class, so we cannot use uh, primitive as type parameter here. So what we can do is using roper class here. But what is roper class? Uh, this means that for every double value there is, it will create a, an object in memory. In memory on heap, so it, this object uh, should be garbage collected, so we'll have uh, memory overhead. If we are going to process, I don't know, millions, billions of double values using this stream, for each of these millions and billions of doubles, we'll need to create this boxing, this... Uh, extra roper, uh, roper object. And we'll need to garbage collect these uh, millions and billions of doubles. So this will create performance and memory problems for us if we are going to use this. And this, this is why in uh, standard Java library we have this double stream right? Uh, which is actually a specific implementation of stream, but it utilizes primitive doubles inside it. So we don't have int integer list in standard Java library. Why? Because actually uh, list is, uh, is a finite, uh, finite structure. So you might, of course, you might utilize list of billions of integers and uh, this might lead to problems in your code. In this, uh, in this case, you can look uh, for FastUtil libraries, the, which is not a uh, standard Java library, but you can utilize just any library there are. There are uh, things like integer list available, already written by, by some people. Uh, but uh, much more potential uh, danger is with streams because streams are can be uh, can be infinite so uh, this is why they decided to put double stream into a standard library of Java. so you always should use uh, this double stream instead of stream of double here so uh, this one is just uh, just an example of using a generator to generate something from from producer and uh, this is an example of how you should uh, get obtain a stream of random uh, double uh, double numbers using double stream. Okay, another example of uh, another example of producing a stream is of course with iterate. Uh, uh, 
which one of you knows about mathematical or arithmetical induction method of proving mathematical theorems? Yeah, I think this, uh, these things are taught, being taught at school. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we know. So, uh, what's arithmetical? Uh, should I just quickly recap what arithmetical induction is? Yeah. If you need to prove something, if you need to prove uh, uh, some, that some predicate, okay, let me, let me be scientific, <laughs> that some predicate P of X holds for each natural number of x, you must prove two things. First, that p holds of 0, and then you must prove that if p holds at n, then this implies that p holds at n plus 1. And uh, this, this gives us the, <coughs> the proof that actually for each n natural number, P of n holds, and uh, natural the set of natural numbers is infinite. So we just proven something on infinite set using these two two simple steps. So uh, actually, <coughs> the same technique can be used to generate or generate stuff, possibly uh, infinite stuff. So. Uh, for example, if we want to generate a sequence of integer numbers starting from zero, we can use this stream.iterate method. So first argument here is uh, like the first step, the first value of stream. And the second argument is a function. See, it's a functional interface, it's a function that converts previous element to the next element. So if we have the first element and if we have uh, a function that uh, having previous element will give us the second element that not given us an element will, uh, will yield uh, the next element then we can uh, create a possibly infinite stream of things. But of course if you need a range of uh, integers please don't use this, use this, because we have, first of all, we have int stream specialized, because int is a, a primitive in Java, and we have int stream dot range that will provide us with a range of stream, uh, of integers, sorry. So, uh, what is the contents of this stream? Uh, okay, all right, I think this might be too tricky for you to, to answer right away. Uh, uh, does anyone know anything about Fibonacci numbers? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Then uh, look at this, at this example and try to understand that this one will give you Fibonacci numbers. A stream of Fibonacci numbers. How it works? First of First of all, the first argument of this uh, iterate is, uh, is this, 0, 1, right? Then at the next step, we are creating a next uh, two element array. And first element of this uh, array is going to be this one, right? And the second is going to be a sum of these two. So it's going to be 0 plus 1 plus 1, so it's going to be 1, 1. Then again, it's going to be 1, and this is going to be a uh, sum of these two, so this is going to be 2. And again, this is going to be 2, this is going to be 3, this is going to be 3, this is going to be 5. And uh, at this stage, we have a stream of what? Of two uh, of arrays with two elements, right? But we don't want arrays, we want numbers. So we are using this map to int, and map to int is a special special method that if we uh, can convert some object into uh, primitive int, then we will have uh, uh, this int stream. 
this stream of primitives. And uh, uh, what we are getting? We are getting just uh, first elements of this array. That's 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, going to be 5, and this is Fibonacci number sequence. So uh, this is how you can produce potentially infinite streams using induction. Okay, I will, I will just skip this because we don't know this, uh, because we don't need this. Okay, uh, intermediate conclusion, conclusions. So there are many standard ways to generate streams. So uh, for simple cases, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You will have standard library. Uh, you will have just standard utilities that will produce the needed streams for you. Uh, in all the practical cases, you will just need, need standard library. So, uh, for the sake of performance, there are primitive streams, three types of primitive streams, in-stream, long-stream, and double-stream. So, you are using them if you need to process ins, longs, and doubles. But most likely, you will need to process strings or other objects. So, in my practice, I don't use them that often. But you just need to know that there is such thing. Okay, so this is all about creating streams. So now we have stream and we want to cre create another stream from this stream, just process them. So what can, can be done? First of all, we can uh, just cut head and tail of the stream and uh, we just throw limit and take while and skip and drop while. So if you just uh, uh, want uh, three top elements of the stream, you just use dot head, three, and you will get three elements. Or uh, you just uh, take while and pass it uh, through some predicate, and as soon as predicate became false, yield as false, uh, then we just cut this uh, head. And the same for, for the tail of the stream. Filter. All know, already know about filters. So you just uh, using predicate here, Oh, by the way, this question marks u per t. It's a question. Let's uh, let's repeat uh, let's repeat the lesson about genetics. Why predicate has uh, this question marks u per t here? Why it's not extends t? Hmm? You don't remember? Do you remember this one? This rule. Yes. Producer extends, consumer super. And uh, you can plainly see from this picture that we are talking about consumer here, right? <laughs> it's going to consume our blocks. So, uh, uh, predicate by its nature is a consumer. So, if we have a predicate uh, that can consume numbers in general, then certainly this predicate can consume uh, some more specific numbers, say doubles. This is why question mark super. See? You can utilize, you can put here as a predicate, some predicate that can judge uh, true or false uh, given more, more general type, like uh, number. Even if we just uh, going to test only only integers, for example, if it can judge any number, then of course it can judge uh, integers, and thus this is why we have question marks u per t here. So please remember, this is a separate topic, but very very important. And now you you see th this is all very just I don't know just interwoven. This uh, this stuff. Uh, uh, you need to know uh, is everywhere. So please don't forget about this. Producer extends consumer super. Please note that you must, uh, you must remember this. This is one of the uh, fundamental rules in Java programming. Okay, so here we have this, consume, this predicate and it can judge uh, what to swallow and what to pass through. So you can use uh, a predicate as an argument of filter method on stream interface. Hope this makes sense. 
Okay, same for, for the map. Uh, in the map you have, we have a function that, uh, that on the uh, one side it consumes things and on the other side it produces things. New things are made out of uh, old things. So, please note this super and this extends. Yeah? This is uh, the type of uh, incoming things. So, this function must be able to consume these things or more generic type. And this is what we expect this function to produce. So, this function may produce this R type or maybe more specific type which still can be cast to R. This is why function is always have this uh, super t extends r, r uh, when we when we are using this uh, um, function as a functional interface as a parameter of stream. So this is the nature of a function. Okay, uh, flat map. Mm, flat map is a bit more tricky, and unfortunately, I still don't have a, a moving picture explaining what map is, uh, but uh, let me try to let me try to draw it to you. Uh, flat map works like this. If uh, we have one big entering this uh, the stage of the stream, the stage of the pipeline, we can split this brick into smaller pieces, say into three bricks, and then on the output we'll have a stream with three bricks here. So it sort of multiplies. Why, it, uh, why it's called flat map? Because if we just map this brick into, I don't know, list of three bricks, then as the output we will have a stream of list of brick the difference. But if we are going to uh, to get stream of bricks, but more bricks here, right? We need to utilize flat map. Let's touch the word map. Uh, flat. It's flat because it's just flattens, uh, flattens uh, the collection. So, uh, for example, <coughs> uh, if we want to uh, if we want to get uh, a stream of words in, in, in the file, we are reading the file, we are reading lines of file, like using this files.lines, it will uh, give us stream of string. And we need to split these uh, lines into words. So just uh, uh, using, using this separator split a stream, we will get uh, uh, we will get uh, the stream of words. If we use just plain map here, we will get stream of stream of stream. So this is the difference between map here and flat map here. So uh, if we want just plain flat uh, stream of these elements, we need to use flat map, not map. Uh, so uh, this is another uh, very important method. And uh, yeah, of course, I just nearly forgotten. I want to ask you, I don't know if we have time for today, but maybe next week in the beginning, there is a classical, classical task. Uh, if we have a sort of text file, large text, text file, we can count words in it. So that uh, get, uh, get a table the key of the table is the word, and uh, the value is the uh, number of times it, occurred in, in, it occurs in the text. If we are talking about English text in English, then, uh, of course, uh, the article there <laughs> will be top, uh, top word, uh, most recently used word, but uh, we can count, uh, make this word count ex uh, exercise, I think, uh, later today or uh, next week. Okay, so uh, distinct. Another, another method, 
uh, if we have say some stream of values we can just omit the values that already occurred earlier in in the stream so uh, this uh, this one one five eight seven eight five nine nine will output only distinct values here and uh, what happens when you execute this one uh, say we have infinite uh, infinite stream of integers from 1 to 10 and uh, we have this distinct and we for each we will print the len these values so what do you think is going to happen when you execute this uh, this line of code what it will print uh, it will print them yes distinct uh, some distinct uh, numbers in random order right because it's random yeah and then and that will and then what then it hangs because uh, uh, here thread local random will continue to produce random numbers from 1 to 10 but since all the numbers are already s printed here distinct just won't pass it to to the next stage so you will uh, your program will hang in endless loop in infinite loop and uh, after printing uh, numbers from 1 to 10 in random order so you can just try it so uh, yeah distinct can be uh, used with caution with in infinite uh, streams you can hang your program here okay uh, you also uh, can sort uh, the stream using method sorted uh, just uh, just like you sort I don't know elements in array or list but of course it doesn't make sense for infinite strings because uh, uh, sorted works only when uh, stream ends so what actually sorted does it collects all the value internally into some huge array list uh, then it realizes that we reached the end of the stream and then it, it sorts this and then it con uh, converts this internal buffer into another stream so no magic here uh, just like distinct distinct inside it has a huge hash map so it just uh, sees if uh, the value is already in hash map or not we also have this peak method uh, that uh, allows us to just peek to have a glance of what's uh, what's going through our pipeline so if we just uh, uh, have this map map filter map flat map blah 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 chain of operations we can insert peak operation and uh, uh, the thing that we can do we can uh, just provide system out print as an argument of this peak and we will see in console what actually is flying through our pipeline it's absolutely prohibited to uh, change intermediate state of elements it's absolutely prohibited to mutate elements uh, that are going through stream because uh, you can just break break the streams uh, because they don't expect uh, its elements to be mutated in uh, operations other than map or flat map okay uh, and then terminal operations so we have uh, already prepared the stream that we wanted and now we want to materialize it just collect it into some map or list or something so what do we have here first of all uh, we have find first and find any elements uh, fi find first and find any methods that will uh, present us the first element or any element and uh, what's the difference between these two actually no difference if we are talking about single threaded streams because first element that it meets will be any element so but if uh, you are going to to utilize parallelized streams in multi-threaded environment then this makes difference because uh, uh, this one will be easier to find it must be not necessarily the first one uh, so uh, my suggestion for you is uh, when you 
literally need any element of the stream, you find any. Even if you are using single threaded application, if you are writing single threaded application, still please use find any. It will uh, make no difference with find first, but if later somebody wants to convert your application to parallel to multi-threaded, it will be way easier to, to do this if you are using this one, not this one. Okay, uh, and you see it, it uh, returns optional and you don't know what optional is yet, but uh, actually optional is, uh, is a container that might contain a single element or it's an empty set. So optional is a set of zero or one elements. And uh, uh, why, uh, why this find first and find any returns optional? It's like returning an element that we want or if the stream itself is empty, no elements, it will return an empty optional. I will elaborate on optionals later. Also we have any match, all match, non match if we have predicate, so it's sort of uh, uh, filtering and uh, uh, create uh, uh, and re uh, returning boolean. Sometimes we don't need an element itself. We just want a boolean. Like, uh, uh, do we have elements that match predicate, uh, given predicate in this stream? So yes or no. Please, we we don't need elements themselves. We just need a simple answer. Yes or no. So if you uh, uh, you are happy with such an answer, you can use any match, all match, and non match. And also we have this for each, which uh, is executed for, for each element of stream. And uh, here come more interesting methods. Here comes more interesting stuff. Reduce. Well, I think some of you already heard something about MapReduce algorithm. Do you heard something about MapReduce? No, not yet. Oh, it's famous, it's famous what made Google famous, actually. It was a famous paper by Google, how they, uh, how they process huge amounts of data in sort of MapReduce algorithms. And actually, uh, the name Map and name Reduce means the same thing still in many languages and still in many, in many uh, frameworks of data processing frameworks. Uh, Java Streams API is a simplistic data processing framework. You can uh, look at it in, in such a way. So what does reduce do? It reduces multiple values into one. And uh, uh, for example, if you have uh, just a stream of, uh, uh, stream of numbers and you want a sum, a total amount in the end, it's very, I think, in, you need this very frequently, right? So it's very often you need the total amount. So you can uh, use reduce operation. And what reduce operation will need from you? First, it will need identity, so zero amount. And then it will uh, need uh, operator, binary operator, how to sum two uh, elements, how to add two elements into one. And uh, see, it might work in this way, in this sequential way, but also, also, reduce operation can do things in parallel, like on this picture. See the difference between this one and this one. And from your point of view, it doesn't matter how it works. You just use reduce. And if you are using parallel streams, it will parallelize reducing for you under the hood and you, you won't need to, to write any extra code for this. So it's just made uh, faster, faster than this. Uh, also, and if we have reduced with identity, so you see a zero is provided here, and zero is provided in two places here, here and here, just uh, a, first, uh, a first value that's being reduced with other values. Also, there is such a thing as reduce without identity. Uh, like in reduce operations must be associative in terms of algebra. And uh, since you are not, oh, 
from time to time as you as you see now I am stepping into mathematics <laughs> mathematical stuff and uh, yeah there are lots of ideas from uh, pure mathematics in programming in creating uh, standard libraries so it's a bit pity that uh, you are maybe not familiar with some of the concepts but uh, I advise you to make yourself familiar at least with the elements of formal algebra here so uh, from uh, I'm using plus sign here and I'm using it as a illustration of, uh, of reducing but it not necessarily be uh, just arithmetical addition it can be I don't know concatenation of strings it can be any operations that giving two things will give you just uh, another thing out of two things so it may be multiplication as well and uh, uh, for example, maximum and minimum of two values uh, is another, another example of uh, uh, algebraic operation and it can work, can, still can work as algebraic operation. So if we are going to find the maximum value in the whole set, it can be used as reduce in the same way. We just provide this maximum here and uh, using it step by step or in parallel like here we can find the maximum value in all the set of values but unlike uh, mm, plus operation which has its identity zero identity value uh, for uh, for addition identity value is zero for multiplication identity value is unity one because if you just multiply x by one then you will have still have x if you add 0 to x you will still have x so uh, this is an example of operator with uh, identity for maximum and minimum you don't have identity but still you can use it in reduce operation uh, but now the result is not guaranteed it's not guaranteed in case when stream is empty what's the maximum value in empty stream you don't know because the stream is empty and this is why uh, reduce without identity will return you optional here like what's the sum of uh, empty stream if you have zero as identity it's zero right no no transactions no money zero amount what's the maximum transaction in empty stream we don't know it's empty value uh, so you already have made reduce operations in the standard library like count counting all the values one by one maximum sum average and summary statistics that in one will return you in one object it will return you this uh, uh, important uh, statistics uh, features of the set like count sum minimum and maximum but uh, reducing is uh, powerful but we have something more powerful than that it's called collectors or collect operations I will skip uh, I will skip your introduction into collector interface uh, well generally this means that you can write your own, your own custom collector but uh, this is not something you are going to do now so let's skip this uh, let's talk about standard collectors that are already provided by standard library and the uh, most used collectors are to list and to set uh, so uh, for example if you have uh, my stream that elements stream of foo then you can just collect all the elements into list using this one my stream dot collect collectors dot to list so you can uh, just materialize your stream back to list using to list collector here and uh, you also can collect to maps materialize your stream to map uh, like uh, like this we have uh, a stream of person and uh, a person has a integer field called id so if for example we need to to obtain a map from uh, person's ID to person themselves like map from integer to person 
We can do this using a single collect uh, method, but now we are using collectors to map and we say uh, literally the following please collect people in from this uh, from this stream uh, using uh, get id extracting this as a key and extracting this as value so this uh, p arrow p means uh, identity mapping we take person and we just do nothing with this with with, with it uh, just uh, person to person right if uh, for example we wanted to get a mapping from person's id to person's name then we could, could put here uh, person double column get name so this would be a map from integer to string for example okay <coughs> uh, you also can collect to unmodifiable list set map to, to immutable list and uh, to concurrent map also uh, there is a very, very useful utility uh, called uh, collectors.joining because sometimes uh, if you have a stream of persons, for example, uh, you will need a string where person names are uh, just separated by comma, just like Vanya, comma, Petya, comma, Masha. So, uh, please don't write your own for loop for this often junior developers try to invent the, the wheel so please use this joining collector or if you uh, if you don't have streams if you just have uh, uh, iterable if you have just list of strings or array of strings you still can use uh, this join to, to join uh, multiple strings into one using comma separator or whatever separator you, you want. Here's an interesting one. Uh, what if, uh, for example, we have, uh, uh, we have a stream of uh, dishes, uh, a stream of uh, dishes and menu. So let's, we have restaurant menu and in this menu we have uh, I don't know just enumeration of dishes uh, this uh, uh, this example I borrowed from a book wrote by some Italian folk so <laughs> that's why pizza and dishes the Italians they like maybe eating so this is why <laughs> cooking some cooking examples so sorry about that if you're a bit hungry there will be more more of them later Okay, so uh, let's imagine we have a restaurant menu and this uh, restaurant menu uh, we look at it as a stream of some dishes. So what if we want to group it by some property? Say uh, we want to collect uh, it into, into a map and the key is going to be to type of dish like fish, meat and other and the value values in this map uh, we want them to be a list of dish so that fish and all the fish uh, dishes like meat and all the meat dishes uh, so this can be easily done just like in the example that I gave you in the very beginning with transactions by currency just using this collectors grouping by dish get type so this is just a single line example that makes non-trivial job I don't expect you to, to remember this right away, of course, but please remember that there is such, uh, such a facility in Java language. And uh, the moment you need it, please uh, open this slide, it's available online, and uh, do, uh, do it uh, like, like it's shown here. Uh, we can uh, do even more than this. Uh, what if uh, we want to split it further? like here we collected uh, it by type but what if we want to collect them first by type and then by uh, caloric level so uh, just fish normal diet meat and and so on and uh, it can be it also can be easily done using so-called downstream collectors so uh, what, what does this mean uh, if one collector collected uh, elements into list then we can 
uh, view this list as a stream itself and then we can group this stream using downstream collector so we just using uh, using like this collectors grouping by dish get time type and then as a second optional argument we can omit it but if we provide second collector this is called uh, downstream collector and it will work on each of these lists as if it was uh, a stream uh, and uh, not only that not only uh, just uh, grouping by we can do we can also reduce uh, things like we can count uh, uh, count elements uh, see using uh, grouping by dish, uh, dish uh, get type and for downstream collector we are passing collectors dot counting here if we are not passing any anything that it's going to be list of dish here but if we are passing collectors.counting as downstream collector we will uh, get the number of actual dishes here so we're just counting so it's going to be to be a map of dish dot type uh, and long unlike this one which is map from dish dot type to list of dish here so we can also count so as you can see we can do pretty tricky stuff with your data using java streams api uh, okay so let me maybe skip this for the sake of making this more <laughs> more simple for you okay parallel streams you can just uh, invoke parallel method anywhere in your stream just in the very beginning in the very end just before the terminal operation and if you invoke this uh, parallel method this means that you declare that you want parallelization of processing of your stream and uh, uh, if you are using parallel then java will try to parallelize the processing of your data using your pipeline like it will try to use parallel reduce uh, it will try to split the stream in sections and just uh, uh, process it in parallel and separate threads but it can be called uh, it should be called with caution why because not every task is easily parallelized like if we have a uh, array as a source of your data then of course it can be easily parallelized because if we have this array We already know that there are, I don't know, one million values in this array. And we have four cores, then Java knows, okay, let's split it this way, let's process it, start to process it like, like this. So if we have array as the source of the data, then uh, it can be easily, the, the processing can be easily parallelized. But if uh, your stream is not an array based, if your stream is uh, uh, infinite stream, if your stream is a generated stream then java just don't know how to split the work it just don't know it may uh, skip for example uh, to i don't know 1000 records if your uh, if your stream allows this operation it may skip it may split but uh, is this 1000 an optimal value we don't know because we don't know in, the, in advance how many records are there in, in your uh, stream and uh, not only this you should take care about uh, data structures that you are using you already know that there are thread safe and not thread safe data structures and of course if you are using parallel stream processing you must uh, be careful and use only thread safe data structures so uh, this parallel method is a sort of magic but uh, this magic doesn't magically solve all your uh, problems with uh, performance of processing so please uh, use uh, use this with caution okay and now about a few words about optionals as I told you before optional is a container that contains an object or or nothing and uh, it's very 
very interesting from historical perspective because Java language is the language that supports nouns. As you already know, each value, each t value, uh, can have value of type t, or you can write value equals null. Right? So actually, null can be passed instead of any non primitive value in Java. And if you are going to dereference, like, say, value dot foo here and if value is going to be now then you will have now pointer exception in Java in runtime and we are trying to avoid runtime exceptions right but this is the case of a runtime exception that cannot be avoided uh, using Java compiler just because Java support nulls and uh, this is, I think, due to only historical reasons that uh, all the question, uh, all the all the languages uh, in the late 19th, then Java was designed, uh, they supported nulls. So uh, in Java we don't have any null safety, and compiler doesn't know when we do some value if it actually contains a value, if it contains null. Uh, this is fixed in uh, modern languages like Scala and Kotlin. They have null safety, so uh, you declare type T is it nullable or non-nullable. So compiler will warn you if you are going to probably dereference null value, but not with Java. And uh, this is a problem in functional programming. So what they decided to do uh, partially fix this through uh, optional class. So optional class, when you are declaring something as optional, then you say, okay, optional value is never, is never going to be null. If you declare something as optional, it's never going to be null. But inside of this optional, we either have a value or we don't have one. So uh, you can, and you can think of optional as of stream of zero or one element. And it's very, it has uh, similar methods. So like creating optional, you can create empty optional just like you create an empty stream. You can create uh, optional of some X value and it will throw you a null pointer exception if X is null. But uh, most probably you will create an optional using this factory method of nullable. It will create you non-empty optional or empty if X, uh, X is null. And, now, and uh, after that, you can do some tricky things, like uh, imagine you have insurance or you don't have one, and you want to get the insurance name. And uh, what do you usually write in this case in plain uh, imperative way? If insurance is not null, then print a land insurance get name. Else print what? Print the empty string or something like this. But using optionals, you can do this in declarative way. Like, uh, see, we have optional of nullable insurance here. Insurance can be null or can be not null. And then we are using map insurance get name and we have optional of string, which will be empty if insurance is null and which will not be will be not empty if insurance is not null. So see this map. It works just like map of st on strings on streams. And uh, the same of uh, the same is with the uh, flat map. Uh, imagine you have you might have a car and you might not have a car. And your car might have an insurance and might not have an insurance, right? So, uh, and uh, ex imagine we want to get name of insurance of your car. If you have car and insurance or empty stream, empty string, if you either don't have a car or if you have a car, but you don't have an insurance. Uh, please imagine the number of nested ifs, if blocks in your 
uh, imperative code, like if this, then else, if this, then else. This is going to be lots of code, and you will probably make a mistake in this code. And this is why, instead of this, you can use optionals like this. Uh, so, optional person, uh, you either have a person or not have a person. Uh, then, uh, person get car. Uh, let's uh, get car uh, return uh, optional of car. It might be an empty optional. But if you are using flat map, it will not return you an optional of optional. It will return you just plain optional. And then you're getting insurance again via flat map because insurance you might have insurance you might not have an insurance and then you are getting get name now it's a plain map because if you have an insurance then certainly it has a name or else return unknown so instead of many many nested if blocks you have literally only one line of java code here using optionals so i recommend you to use this uh, <coughs> approach when dealing with uh, possibly nullable values in Java. In JavaScript or in Kotlin, you have uh, things like this. Uh, car dot question mark insurance and it will return you null if car is null and it will return you insurance if car is not null. In Java, you don't, this, uh, don't have this dot question mark uh, syntax. Unfortunately, or Fortunately, I don't know. Uh, but uh, in Java, you, you may utilize this uh, optional uh, class and uh, it's the correct way to, to, to write such code. So please uh, avoid using this. If something not null, then if something not null, you will make a mistake here. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, also optional has filter, by the way. Uh, so yeah, uh, in this example, we see if person is uh, more than minimal age, then we are going to get its insurance. If uh, the person is age is less than minimal age, then insurance will be unknown. So, okay, but uh, you you should use optionals with caution as well, uh, because the dumb usage of optional is worse than null actually, uh, because if you are creating optional only to check that something is not null like this it's a dumb way to using of using optional because it's uh, you are creating an extra an extra object here and actually this is uh, this code is not clearer than this one so if you just need to check something for now uh, once then maybe optional is not what you need so uh, there are some rules if you are using optional uh, we expect you to follow some rules. For example, a variable of optional type should never be null, of course, or else it will make just, will just blow your brain, <laughs> right? Because you, uh, you should never expect optional to be null. So you should always create non-null optionals. Fields with the optional type are useless, actually, in most cases because uh, checking for non-empty of this field is no better than checking for null. If you're uh, holding optional as a field, uh, you will have a memory overhead because optional is an extra object in Java memory heap. Never put optional in collection, and in general, optional is for return values, not for method arguments. So, uh, very often, and it's even it's a good practice, if you're returning something from function and uh, your semantics is you either returning one thing or you're returning an empty empty set, just no thing, nothing. So if you're returning one thing or nothing, you you might want to use optional in this case as a return value of your function. Then it will be easy to to process this using optional map uh, and things like this later uh, by the users of your code. All right, now we'll just wake up and have a short interactive quiz uh, about about bad code uh, with streams because uh, stream is a powerful tool as you already understand and uh, when it first appeared in java 8 many programmers were so excited that they 
they tried to insert streams everywhere in their code. So that, uh, yeah, it's uh, also a joke appeared. Uh, your, your, code, uh, your code base is ill with streamosis, like streamos, the streamosis of your code, like inflammation of streams. Okay, so uh, uh, now we are going to review some code snippets and try to figure out why strings are used wrong in this code, in this example. It's going to be easy, so um, let's, just, let's just try. Okay, uh, first example. We have a collection of elements and then we collect it uh, and then we convert it to stream and then we are running this for each method so we are going to, to do something with each element of this collection. So what's wrong here in your opinion? Can this code be more clear, more performant, more concise? Sorry? Tai? We have stream and we like iterating through these streams Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are collect yeah, you are converting collection to a stream just for iterating through stream. all the elements. Yeah, so no, no maps, no filterings, no flat maps, no tricky stuff. So it's like the stream is just with the Yeah. Or, or we need to change like, for like our purpose. No. And also stream can be infinite. So. Yeah. Uh, no, stream can be infinite, but collection cannot be infinite. But Here we have... Stream is collection. Yeah. Right. Collection uh, made out of stream cannot be infinite. But yeah, here uh, the answer is that collection... Actually, collection already has a for each method. So actually, you can just uh, throw away this dot stream and uh, use this for each method. But uh, in, in practice, it's, uh, if you just need to iterate over collection, you can use just plain old for loop. It's, very, it's most effective. It's, it's clear. It, allow you, it allows you to do more things. It's uh, less uh, headache with uh, checked exceptions. And uh, uh, so if you need just all... If uh, iterating through a collection is the only thing that you need to do, please use a for each method of a collection or plain old good old for loop. Okay, what's wrong here? We have a collection, then we convert it to stream, only to collect to materialize it back to another collection. In the first uh, case, it's uh, collecting to list. In the second case, it's collecting to set. So we basically take our like uh, collection and uh, like move it to another like other list or set. Yeah, right. So how can we do it in more concise way? Do you know? Actually, we can put it in. Uh, as a parameter of uh, constructor so actually yeah this will be the same this will yield us the same result but it will be more efficient uh, because we don't create a stream here we don't uh, bother just enumerating them one by one in stream well in in the end it will iterate inside this collection but it will be more efficient less memory overhead less more performance and more clear more concise also all right so so now we realized so don't we don't need to convert your collections to stream if you are going to do some simple thing okay maybe maybe this one what's wrong here oh yeah what's uh, what's going on here uh, okay, okay, what's, uh, let's try to figure out first what, uh, what was meant, what this code is actually doing. Find, find maximum value. And then uh, this maximum value, this will return us op optional, by the way. Yeah. This method will return us optional. And, if, uh, and then we are calling get which will get uh, the value of this optional if it's non-empty. If it's empty, it will throw null pointer exception. So this is what, uh, what we are doing. So this code uh, either finds a maximum element in collection or throws null pointer exception 
uh, if the collection is empty. So now we realize that maybe we can do this something like this. <laughs> we have uh, this. I told you about this collections uh, collections uh, class. It's uh, very very useful. It's uh, uh, it ca contains many uh, many useful algorithms that can be used together with your connections without any streams. So we just same with less garbage, right? Okay. What did the author of the code want to say here? What do you think? What's going on here? Find the, uh, the first element of sorted uh, of sorted stream, which means means the, like the first alphabetical or, the or alphabetical. minimum. minimum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here they wanted to find the minimum element, <laughs> but uh, see if minimum requires n operations. It just uh, look through all the stream and and see what which is minimum. You are already understand that one pass. The sorting requires n logarithmal operations. If minimum is just O of n, then sorting is O of n times log n. So uh, this is more actually more performant than with this one, even asymptotically more performant. And of course, there is lots of memory overhead here. How do we improve this code? What's going on here? We are getting like length of stream, yeah, the like the count. Size of the, size of the stream, so. Uh, and uh, maybe you just didn't notice when I told about collectors and then when I told about downstream collectors, I told you that there are lots of collectors for, for the case like this. Uh, let me reiterate because it's important. Uh, that uh, See, we, we have collector, then we are passing some collector here, like grouping collector or counting collector or anything. But uh, first of all, it's going to be grouping collector. And here we have a list of elements. But we can treat this list as, uh, as a stream, and thus uh, we will have um, collectors um, that resemble uh, standard stream methods, like count, like maximum, minimum, and so on. But these are intended to be used only as downstream collectors. Uh, so please don't, uh, don't mix them. Uh, uh, don't mix them because this 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 thing is intended only to be used as downstream collector as an argument of enclosing collector, not on, at the root uh, uh, at the root of uh, this collect method, because uh, this is less performant uh, than this one. So and of course this is more concise. So please don't use collectors dot counting in this context. Never. What's wrong here? Oh, this is, this one should be easy. Is, is, is this the same? collection size? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah, yeah, the correct answer. It's just the collection size. So, and uh, what's, what's, uh, I don't know, what's bad, what's really bad about this one? Uh, if you are counting elements of stream, the only thing that this count can do is literally count elements one after one. Just get first, second, third, fourth, five, okay. One millionth element. Cool. But when we are calling collection.size, for example, in array list, there is also already a variable that <laughs> <It> says <laughs> there is one million elements in this list. And you're just reading this variable. So here we have O of 10 versus O of 1 of constant time. So it's a way more performant. Not only it's more concise, it's a way more performant. Uh, 
All right, how to improve this one? So, actually, what's this? We have a list of lists, right? A list of lists. And we convert it to stream. And then we flat map to each, each element of this stream as list, right? So we are converting this list to stream, flat map and count. So what do we have here? What we, do we actually count here? total number of lists. Yes. So we have list of lists and we need a total number of lists. Why are we, we are using flat map to convert everything uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to just a plain list, just to flat list. Oh. Right? Because uh, here we have list of lists. If we have stream, a list of lists, we will have stream of uh, list. But we need a stream of elements. So this is why we are using flat map here. Here we will have stream of elements. And uh, here we are using count. So literally we are uh, just counting all the elements in all the lists. And this is uh, suboptimal. How do you write, rewrite this code to make it more optimal? Well, the idea. Of course you don't know actual methods, but uh, what might be the idea? Second list size Second of it, list size of it. and uh, sum up everything. So this might be a sum uh, reduce operation on size. See, like this. We have list of lists oh, converted okay. to stream. We can just uh, getting list of sizes. Here, instead of getting, uh, getting stream of all the elements, we don't need actual elements. All we have uh, uh, to do is just to count, right? So instead of uh, getting stream of actual elements and counting them one by one by one, we can get stream of sizes, which is way more performant, less memory overhead. Again, uh, more simple. Uh, so, and this list size is going to be uh, is going to work lightning fast because the size is just where you are just reading the field, the size field of the list. Of the list. So uh, yeah, we are getting stream of lists. We are converting each list to its size, and then we are summing it up. Of course, we will need to sum up because we just don't know in advance uh, if it's going to be list of list of, uh, and uh, all the elements are going to be uh, of equal sizes. Then we just can multiply one to another. But if we don't know in advance the size of inner lists then of course we are going to just sum it one one after other but it will be it's still it will be far way better than this one okay 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 how to improve this one is met on any of element. So it's actually like looking if they have like first, like if it has elements. It, if it has elements that uh, satisfies this condition. And uh, yeah, so what it does, it just uh, filters elements uh, uh, based on condition, right? Then it finds the first one and we're checking if it's present. But uh, in the end, we are going to get a bo Boolean value. Just true or false, just yes or no, if it's present or not present. And I, as I told you before, there is a special method here. So here, we, yeah, here it will return an optional. And uh, actually, uh, as I told you, yeah, find first will, will work slower in uh, multi-threaded, less performant in multi-threaded environment. And the, here we are getting this element and then we are checking if it's present or not. But why? If we just need a Boolean answer. And for Boolean answer we have this any match 
with condition as its argument. So this will answer your question. If any element is matching a condition, this is answered through dot any match. So please don't don't use this. And there are other examples. So please try to decipher them. Like <laughs> <laughs> like see where uh, these are just uh, uh, these are actually examples of real real code written by developers <laughs> for code review and uh, I think there is even one example from me that I provided to Tagir because uh, uh, this is uh, borrowed from Tagir Valeev's uh, 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 Tagir Valeev's blog post actually and uh, conference talk all these examples uh, so I must credit him uh, but one of these examples uh, <laughs> is mine. Okay, so uh, actually, uh, what people what people are doing? Let's have a stream. Let's filter it by condition, and then try to find if if there are any if there are any, and then you they using any match x to true. Of course, it's going to work if there is any element here. So you might use uh, any match here at this step using condition as uh, as argument uh, the same here uh, stream map condition uh, 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 oh yeah what's what does this mean map condition condition is a predicate right so it takes uh, element as argument and it returns true or false so actually we will have uh, stream of booleans here stream of booleans here and all three examples and then we are trying to to find any match boolean to boolean that's any 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 true value here any true value any uh, any true value any true value actually all this can be reduced simply to this one so these are tricky and dumb ways these four examples are dumb ways to write this this expression so please remember this any match method it's your friend it can answer just yes or no if anything matches uh, uh, some some condition please try not to reinvent the wheel please try not to shoot your leg okay how to improve this one you are going to do something only if okay okay only if the stream has uh, an element that, that bigger than zero. no 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 the amount of elements that uh, yeah amount of elements uh, that satisfies the condition, condition if, uh, more than zero. which uh, is equivalent to what Number of elements, any match, any match. Oh, yeah. again, <laughs> again. Uh, if any matches, it's already more than zero. Right? Yes, okay, yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Again, you can use any match here, just just because, yeah, you you are trying to and see how foolish this code is actually. You don't need to, to count all. Of them. Yeah, you just need yeah, one. yeah, yeah. That's Absolutely, that's yeah. That's the point and. If you're writing such a code, you, then you, the the program will count all the elements. Yeah. It's, it's just foolish. It's just yeah. So yeah, it's way way more better to just use this uh, any match condition. Okay. And how about this one? This is the last one. How to improve this one? <laughs> oh wait. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let's think about it. It still can be improved, but uh, any match will, won't do because, uh, yeah, it will tell us that at least one. But we, we need to know that there are at least two of elements. How do you improve this one? <laughs> no. It cannot. It's too. Yeah. It's 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 too. Yeah. It's too. It's uh, it's too tricky for IntelliJ to improve this one. But it must not be too tricky for you 
to understand how to improve this one. Okay, okay. Let's. Yeah. Uh, okay, first of all, this is stupid because we still recount all of the elements in the string. We should replace this, definitely. Uh, replace it, yes, but we don't. Uh, we must we stop counting as soon as we reach three. two. Yeah. Yeah, we were, yeah, yeah, after we reach two. So. Okay. Oh, it's. It's limit. Uh, limit. Okay. Limits. It's I cutting. I, I, I explained you about limit. Okay. Yeah, everything. <laughs> ah, okay. So, once I had a once my wife uh, uh, presented me a t-shirt uh, with uh, the following words, everything that I say um, will be asked on the exam. <laughs> so <laughs> that uh, everything that I'm saying here at lecture <laughs> is useful for you. So <laughs> I've been talking about this limit, but of course you already forget. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, if you are using this limit, uh, this limit method, it will just uh, shortcut all the calculation as soon mm -hmm. as it has three elements. As soon as we have three elements, okay. Then we, m it's. Uh, it, uh, we have three elements. It's not a big deal to count three elements for for, for the modern system. So yeah, we can count them. But yeah, uh, uh, we uh, we might just uh, stop counting as soon as we have at least three. Okay. So uh, my conclusions are the following: the uh, declarative the declarative approach does not devalue the understanding of how the calculation occurs. So uh, you already understood that we have these optionals, we have these uh, streams, and we have this another another example of declarative approach is uh, uh, comparators. I, I shown you comparator by this, then by this, and revert, and so on. And uh, this is a declarative approach of doing things. But you still must understand how the calculation occurs, how uh, uh, how actually Java is uh, uh, carrying out this calculation so that you not write the dumb code. Uh, strings should be used wisely and there are many cases there uh, where they should not be used at all. For example, if you are doing simple things, simple iterations uh, through collections, there are already way more performant ways to, to do this and please uh, don't put streams just everywhere just because you can, uh, just because you can. The same is true for optionals. Optionals are very powerful, but please don't use optionals just, just because you can. <laughs>